how to use Airtable content calendars. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a content calendar on Airtable or use one of their templates to get started with your content management. So let's get into it now. The first thing you might be wondering is what are content calendars and what do they really do? Well, content calendars are platforms or templates where you can start managing all of your content needs. So if you're running a YouTube channel or a business or any kind of platform and you post content daily, then you want to keep track of your content. You want to keep track of your content production and you can use content calendars to do that. Now, Airtable provides a content calendar a template and you can click on use template over here and use the template that is provided by Airtable. Although this template is not suited for everyone and their own needs, you can definitely customize it to your own needs or get started with a content calendar from scratch. So it's pretty easy getting started with a content calendar, even if you're choosing to get started with a template or with a blank canvas. But this is the kind of basic template that you're going to get with the Airtable template. Now, as you can see over here, that first off, you have your name. Then on the top, you have your content pipeline, you have your campaigns and results. So these are the three basic sections that are outlined within the Airtable platform. So this is a bird's eye view of the template provided by Airtable. And you can see first off, you have your name section, then you have the status of this video, then you have a headline section, a sub headline, then the creator of the video or image, then you have the image, any kind of due date, then the channels that this needs to be posted on. After that, you have your campaign table. So it could be from your best ever vacation campaign it could be from your ask you connoisseur campaign or any other campaign that you're running now after that you have a entirely different section called the campaign section now on your campaign section you have three sections created over here where you can monitor different campaigns and see the content creators on the campaign the budget for campaigns the number of posts from this campaign the start date and the end date of a singular campaign now after that you have your results section where you can easily see and summarize all of the results from all of your content and monitor it in a, a dashboard kind of view so it's more like a results at glance or a dashboard for the overall management management of your project. Now, although this is a pretty great template, it is not suited for everyone. And that is why I'm going to get started with creating a new template for people that want customization within their template. Now, you can always start editing this yourself and customizing it to make it your own, or you can go back onto the Airtable home base, and then you're going to click on add a base, or you can just create a base on the item one workspace. So you can see over here that this is a singular workspace and you can delete and create new workspaces as well. Now, if you want to separate your entire brand, so if you're doing like one content calendar for a separate client and one content calendar for a separate client, you can separate it via a different workspace. So you can see over here, I have two workspaces, but I'm going to rename this and I am just going to make it content. And then I'm just going to delete this workspace and delete all of the items within it. Now I'm just going to click on start from scratch, or you can obviously upload a CSV file, Microsoft Excel file, Google sheet file, or paste any kind of table data, or you can get started with one of their templates, but we're just going to click on create a base. And now you can see over here that this is going to be your untitled base. What you're going to do is rename it into content calendar. Then you're going to select the color for your entire project. Now, I'm just going to go with this orange and then you're going to select a logo. After that, you have to add any kind of basic guidelines you want for everyone in the base to view. Once you have done that, you're going to see your basic grid view. Now, the grid view is most important because it's going to derive all of the basic essentials. So first of all, I'm going to delete all of these columns over here just by clicking on this drop down. You're going to scroll down. You're going to click on delete field. I'm going to remove these and... I'm just going to add my own and I'm going to start with content YouTube or let's say if I'm managing like a YouTube video or a social media platform which posts video I would say video name that would be the first column and I'm going to delete this initial column as well or I'm going to rename it into video name because the initial column cannot be deleted. And after that, you can make your second category. So the second thing might be after you have your video name, it could be your video description or just description. Then you can add your thumbnail 
and when you add the thumbnail column you're gonna make sure that you drag down over here and select the image section so you can just copy and paste it by url and then you can create this field and you can only copy and paste urls within this field so make sure you're actually doing that and not leaving it all as text files now after that you can do your link to video and then this is also going to be a url link so we're going to create this field then we're going to add tags and this could be a single line text and we're just going to continue like this then you're going to add another field and you can rename this into your basic platforms so if you're making videos and you're posting videos then you're posting it on different platforms and you can categorize those as well now once you have a basic outline of all of your fields you're going to start editing your data so you're going to start uploading and it's going to be a bit time consuming initially when you're starting off by filling out all of these tags and details but you're going to be able to minimize your work pretty fast because things like tags and platforms can be a tag category and you can make it a select category so you can do that by just adding or importing a another empty table so you're just going to open another empty table you're going to name it into your tags or you can rename it into your blogs or platforms and then you can add details about each platform and then select it from there so that's another way you can do that but i don't like to do that because i find this categorization system to be a bit too much what i like to make is after you have your basic outline for your content calendar you're just going to add and create a empty table you're going to add your dashboard or bird's eye view and then after I add my bird's eye view, I like to take a look at the different ways that I can present this. So you can do this in grid form, you can do a calendar, gallery, and any way you want. I would like to usually do this in a calendar form because this really helps you in monitoring the overall flow of your data. So you can just share this view as well like so so like this you have your basic bird's eye view of a calendar and i really do find that when you're creating content calendars it's essential that you actually do have a section where you're able to monitor your upload dates on a calendar so you can just click on any date and add a plus and then you can add any task or any video name over here so whatever it might be you can add it from here and then you're going to have it directly on this platform now you can add video names over here as well so let's say our first video is intro psychology geography and i'm just going with these very basic names just to make sure it's a bit easier for me to categorize these now you can see now you have all of these different little videos you're going to add another column over here and this is going to be a date column so I'm just going to search for the date and I'm going to delete this and re-add it. It's going to be the due date of each of your video and we're going to create this field. And like this, you can start adding due dates for your videos as well. And this will open up the calendar and you can start adding like this. So let's say we're doing this and what this does, it really does minimize your work. And once you have added all of your dates, you can just go on to your bird's eye view section and then view all of your progress. So that was it for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to start making your own content calendars on Airtable. Although it is a very simple and easy process, some people do get confused and if you feel like you can't start from scratch, you can always start with a template and start editing the basic template to fit your own needs. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.